Almighty God in heaven above came down to earth on Christmas Day. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And that's the real reason why we celebrate Christmas. That's the real reason why we were here. special tonight. Choir, why don't you guys come on up. Would you please make welcome the Hebron Baptist Church Choir and the Church Orchestra. Give it up for these folks. They're going to come on out and they're going to help us celebrate and, uh, Christmas together. To me, I'm telling you, man, the, the next half of the show is it's just getting bigger and bigger. That's why they call it Big Band, right? It's getting bigger and better than ever. So uh, this next thing that we're going to do is we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And, and the one way to do that is to sing some of the greatest Christmas carols that have ever been written about his birth. Now, here's the thing. We're only going to sing the very first verse of every single one of these songs. So, Georgia, I want you guys to sing loud and sing proud and join with us as we do a Christmas medley celebrating the birth of Jesus. Oh, come all ye faithful. You guys sing with us.
Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, has been born to us. Picture it like this with me for a moment. Almighty God in heaven above, the one who was and is and is to come, a king of glory, ladies and gentlemen, came down to earth as a little baby and gave us hope and life and became a king of love for you and me. Now this next song might be new to some of you, and it's not one of these great little hip-hop things. You enjoy this as we sing, King of Glory, King of Love. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, yeah. Let earth receive her King, and let every heart prepare Him room. Let heaven and it just say, let heaven and it just say, come on, God. So come by your favor and lift up your praise to the King of the ages, the ancient of days. Sing hallelujah, this King of creation, this King of the nations, and heaven above is the King of salvation and forever. Let's see. 
sing and love God's love us here to stay.
sticks out for you that you're like, man, that was really, really cool. Well, I want to just really quickly tell you about the coolest, awesomest Christmas gift that I ever got in my entire life. Now, we're going to have to rewind the clock for just a minute, all the way back to the year 1982. Two, two, two. <laughs> I like those sound effects. Yeah, that was, that was, that's big money right there. Did you see that? All right. So in 1982, I was five years old, okay? And, and I wanted this thing that was so cutting edge. It was amazingly advanced technology. You plugged it into your television. It was called an Atari 2600 video game system. All of you children of the 80s are screaming out there. And for all of you kids that have no earthly idea what I'm talking about, Atari 2600 was like the very first video games, okay? And they had these big black cartridges that you put in one at a time to play, and you pretty much got maybe three or four different little colored dots to bounce across the TV screen. And that was really difficult to do in 1982, and it cost a lot of money, and this was the gift that was flying off the shelves. And I wanted one so bad. I mean, I, I, I think I wrote to Santa Claus at least 17 times. And I prayed, oh, dear Lord Jesus, would you just deliver me? Would you deliver me under my Christmas tree an Atari 2600, amen? I, I probably didn't say all that at five. But I really, I really, 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 wanted, I really wanted one really bad. And, uh, you know, and I just didn't think that we would ever get one. So... So, uh, uh, there we are, okay, December the 25th, okay, it's Christmas morning, 1982, and my dad still has it on film, I think it's called like 18 millimeter film, it's, it's quiet, it's silent, it doesn't have any sound, but he had a little blue projector that we put it on, and it's the kind, you know, you take the, the white bed sheets and put them up on the wall so you can watch on family night, you know what I'm saying? My dad still has a film of this, and there I am as a little boy, and I'm in my PJs. And these were really interesting PJs, the kind of PJs that, you know, cover up all of your feet and go all the way up to your shoulders, and they were sometimes very dangerous to zip up. And I love it. <laughs> so there I am, there I am, and there's one more present right underneath the tree, a big old box. And I start opening it up, and what do you think was inside? Not a Cabbage Patch Kid. Right? It wasn't a strawberry shortcake or My Little Pony. No, it was not Ken and Barbie. Who said that? No, it was an Atari 2600, y'all. I got it. I got it. It was the coolest gift I ever got. And you know, I want to prove to you that it was the coolest gift I ever got. Because if you were to fast forward to the current day, December 2012, if you were to... Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That was good. If you were to fast forward and go to my office in, in Hendersonville, Tennessee, where I live, in my house, you would see a desk where I write and arrange all the music, and then right there to the left is a little 15-inch TV, and in the cabinet right underneath it is that same exact Atari 2600. It works perfectly. I have 79 games for it. I just bought three more on eBay a couple months ago. I love that thing. The coolest gift I ever got. Yeah, you can for that. And what's up with them making technology? They don't build things like they used to. You know, you hear that all the time? I have a video game system that is over 30 years old and it works fine. My cell phone can't make it 18 months. What's going on? <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> the older I get, it's maybe not so much about the gifts that I receive, 
as much as it is about the gifts that I give. I mean, my little boy, Boston, this is a perfect example. He's seven years old, and ever since probably July or August of this year, he's been saying, Daddy, 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 because he loves model trains. He just loves them, which really, I mean, just, it just it slays me because, you know, when I was his age, I love model trains too. He's like, Daddy, I want to get a model train engine that smokes. I want smoke to come out of it, Daddy. And, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, they made these model trains that would actually have a little liquid smoke before they realized probably what a horrible fire hazard it was. You know, they built these things. But they're very expensive and they're kind of rare. And I said, listen, buddy, you know, that's a, that's a great idea, you know, but why don't we put it on our Christmas list? You know, Christmas is in, you know, just a few months. And, and he's like, Daddy, you can go online and order it in 30 seconds. <laughs> Telling you what, y'all, this generation coming up, they want it now, you know what I'm saying? But I was like, just, buddy, just wait, you know, just see what Christmas might bring you. Just be patient and just see, you know? And I've heard it every single day since, all right? It's about pull my hair out, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, his daddy got him a little train engine that smokes. You know what I mean? Yes, that is right. And he is seven and he can read. So if you post it online, I'm killing you. Do you understand me? <laughs> don't tell him. Don't tell him. Even though he's, you know, I told you, you don't tell him. But I cannot wait as his daddy to just see the look on his face. He's waited so long. He can't, I just, oh, I'm thinking about it right now. But you know what? When you think about Christmas, when we think about what Christmas really means, that's really what it is. It's not model trains, but think about this. That we have a Father, a Heavenly Father, in the realms of all glory. We just sang about Him, a King of glory. And over 2,000 years ago, He looked down upon mankind. He looked down upon us as children. What is it do you think that He saw? I mean, He's all seeing and all knowing. I know He saw a lot of things, but I think some of the things that really stood out to Him is that he saw pain, he saw hurt, he saw broken hearts and he saw broken dreams, he saw broken families, he saw sin and bitterness, lies and deceit, anger and lust and war, but more than anything I think he saw people with absolutely no hope. <coughs> So this King of glory, the one who put the stars and the universe into place, the one who answers to no one, became human. Just like you and me, with all of our issues and drama and chaos. He was born in a town that most people had never heard of, and he was born to a family of people that most no one really cared much about. He was born in a stable with animals. And he lived a significant life. He lived a life that there has never been or will never be anyone like him in the history of mankind. He taught us how to love. He truly taught us how to live. He died on a cross, innocent, tortured for my sin, for your sin. For the sins of the world, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And He rose from the dead to prove to us that He was who He said He was. To prove to us that He could conquer death, that He could conquer our sin. And he comes with arms open wide, giving you, giving you and me a gift. A gift of hope. A gift of healing gift of peace, a gift of purpose, a gift of love and life everlasting. That's what Christmas really means. And in the midst of all the chaos that this season can bring of dealing with in-laws and cooking extra food for the holidays and trying to remember even if you got enough presents for the people you were supposed to get them for. I know it can be a stressful time. I know that each and every one of us have walked into this room tonight with some needs in our life. 
We might not articulate them to somebody else. But we've all walked into this place right here and right now in need. In need of what only a Savior can give. Be reminded tonight that when he was born, he was called Emmanuel. God with us. You are not alone this Christmas season. You are never alone for all of your life. Because the author and perfecter of our faith, nothing can separate us from his love of those of us that are in Christ Jesus. So Lord, would you remind us of who you truly are this holiday? Would you meet us at our deepest points of need? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel. Then mourns a lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. So rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel.
that no one shall ever be. The birth that brought this whole world to its knees. Oh, 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.